Hello and welcome to VTU eShikshana learning platform. In this video, we are going to discuss regarding data link control. The main objective of this title is to discuss a different DLC services and different protocols say such as simple protocol, stop and wait protocol which uses these DLC services. Then we are going to talk regarding say the completely matured protocol that is PPP point-to-point -point protocol. So as we know that the main purpose of data link layer is to provide a different services to the network layer. This data link layer it got divided into a two sub layers. The uppermost sub layer is known as the data link control layer and the lower layer lower sub layer is called as medium access control sub layer. So in today's video we will going to discuss regarding data link control layer. So to start with, we will talk regarding the services that are provided by data link control sub layer. The three main services, what it provides to the higher layers is framing, flow control and error control. When I talk about a frame, frames are a generally a data units of the data link layer okay so which are transmitted from various network points okay so basically these are the data units which move from one node to the another node so when i talk about the framing say framing the main purpose of framing is to separate the messages say that are moving from source to destination this activity of separating the messages is done with the help of adding the address to the frames. Okay, we add two addresses to the frames. The first one is source address. The second one is destination address. The purpose of the destination address is to identify a destination machine. But when it comes to the source address, it will be useful for the destination machine to send back a acknowledgement to the sender or the source okay now when i talk about a framing normally we come across two different types of frames in a dlc layer the first one is a fixed framing so normally these type of a frames contains the fixed number of bits into it, bits or a data into it. The quantity of the data which is packed in this type of a frames will be all the time fixed. So this ability of fixed frames say makes it say suitable for transmission without the help of any say frame delimiters. Basically, when we talk about the frame, okay, I said that we are talking of packing the bits into the frames. Now, we need some kind of a mechanism to identify beginning and end of the frame. Now, when we talk about the fixed frames, we don't need these type of arrangements. Okay, so that is what we say that it does not need boundaries, definitions of the boundaries. Okay, and another category of the frame is variable sized frames. These variable sized frames needs the way in which say boundaries are required to be identified. So here the data that will going to be dumped into it will be of say not a fixed quantity. It depends. Okay, it depends the quantity what it, the DLC layer gets from the higher layer. Normally, when we talk about the frame, frames will going to include these following fields, say this header, frames will include the header, say next is variable data part, say basically this format which I have shown over here is of say variable sized frame. Then it also includes a trailer part okay now 
when it comes to the variable size frames, we need these type of a definitions, say we call them as a flags, which require to identify beginning and end of the frames. Okay, these flags, the main purpose of these flags is to identify beginning and end of the frame. Okay, this is what we call it as a definition of the boundaries of the frames. Okay, now normally the requirement of this type of arrangement is mainly because the data which is going to be put into the payload part of this frame is not fixed, it is variable. But when it comes to the fixed size frame, the quantity what we will going to put over here, okay, it is all the time it is fixed. So that is the reason the size of the frame will going to remain same. Okay, so this say does not put a more burden for the receiver to identify the frames. But when it comes to the variable size frame, we need these arrangements to identify, okay, this is the beginning of the frame and this is the end of the frame. Now, normally, when it comes to the variable size frame, again, we use two different mechanisms, okay, so to create these variable sized frames. One is the character oriented frames, character oriented frames. The second one is say bit oriented frames. We talk about two different types of frames. One is character oriented, another is a bit oriented. Okay, now what exactly the character oriented framing means? When I talk about the character oriented frames, the, the data which will going to be say included into this payload part will be treated as pack of 8 bits or one character. Okay, so all the data which is present in this character oriented frame will be treated as a characters. Okay, so that is the reason we call it as character oriented frames. This type of a protocols or these type of a frames were very popular when text messages were getting exchanged. Okay, so normally we talk of using two special characters, we call them as a flags. Okay, these are the special characters which we call them as a flags. They are meant here to identify the boundaries of the frames. They are meant here to identify the boundaries of the frames. And this is the header part which includes certain control information along with the two addresses that is sender's address and a receiver's address. Okay. And when it comes to the trailer part, normally it includes certain redundancy data which is obtained by doing certain kind of a calculation, okay, which will be useful in identifying the errors. So the addition of this trailer part to this whole frame will help the receiver to detect the error in the received frames. Okay, now basically this framing, this character oriented framing was say working fine, okay, when the text messages were getting exchanged. But when people started using a multimedia kind of a messages, say during that time, the actual problem starts. So when we start representing say multimedia data, okay, so we will start facing the problems over here. Okay, so many other times it was needed to use these special characters to represent a certain multimedia data. So whenever these type of characters start started appearing in the data part, the actual problem starts with a, this character oriented framing or say byte framing, byte oriented framing. So this flag, if it appears, okay, in this data part, then it starts confusing the receivers because now these flags are basically used to identify the boundaries of the frames. If suddenly, if this type of a character, if it appears in this data part, then it creates a confusion for the receiver, say it is an end of the frame. Okay, now to avoid this confusion, what we do is we use a concept of stuffing in character oriented framing. 
so stuffing is nothing but say normally adding some special character to separate this type of a data which appears in the data part okay we use a some special character such as escape character okay so we see we are stuffing over here the escape character which is basically helping the receiver say helping the receiver to identify identify these type of a characters are not the special character they are the data part okay this concept of stuffing provides a mechanism for receiver to know okay this is not the say end of the frame or this is not the special character it is the data part okay so this idea of stuffing is used to separate these flags these data from the actual flags okay now stuffing again is done with the help of some special characters okay so that special character used to stuff is escape character this escape character will going to appear before flag or escape character that appears in the data okay so say this appears before flag or some special characters that appears in the data now the addition the addition of this kind of a redundancy will happen at a sending side okay and say this provides a mechanism for a receiver to know okay this is not the uh, end of the frame okay now at a receiving side we need to remove this stuffed character okay say if you supply this data with this stuffed values so the interpretation of the data will going to go wrong so for that reason it requires to destuff this stuffed data at a sending side so these redundancy data is will going to be removed at a receiving side before handing over this particular data to the higher layer okay now the one more approach of creating a variable sized frames is bit oriented approach in bit oriented approach we use say these bit streams okay zero followed by six ones and a zero okay so that is zero six ones zero will going to be treat as a flags they will be used to identify the frame delimiters okay so zero six ones zeros will be meant for identifying the beginning and end of the frames okay now why we call it as a bit oriented the data part all the data that appears in the data part we treat it in this protocol it will be treated as a bits it will be treated as a bit simple bits okay in the previous case it was treated as a character here we are treating it as a bits so character means grouping of grouping a, say eight bits into one character okay so here we are treating the whole thing as a stream of bits again the as usual it needs a header and a trailer it can a header includes some control information and address trailer includes the information that is needed to detect an error okay now again there is a possibility that the, these type of a bit streams these type of a bit streams may appear in the data part okay so we'll see with the help of this example okay now see say there is a possibility that we may these type of a bit streams which are meant for the flag may appear in the data part now we need some mechanism to separate it again the idea that is used to separate the bit streams which are similar to that of the flag okay that is stuffing idea so here we will going to stuff one additional bit not a one complete character like a previous case okay so here we will going to add one simple we will going to stuff one simple bit to the data part to separate this data from the flag okay so the basic rule what we use over here for stuffing is say if zero followed by five ones okay if zero followed by five ones comes if it appears in the data part you stuff one zero over there okay the rule is simple if zero followed by five ones appears in the data part it will going to be stuffed with one additional zero okay we are not waiting for this type of a pattern that flag kind of a patterns that is say 
that is 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. We are not waiting for this to appear in the this part. The rule says that if 0 followed by 5 ones appears in the data part, you stuff 1, 0. Okay. This is what is a simple rule we adopt. Okay. So, you take this example in which you look at this data uh, part which appear comes from the higher layer. Okay. Which is represented in the zeros and one forms. So, you see here. So, after these three zeros, you are getting say some eight ones. Okay. Now, according to the rule, zero followed by five ones. One, two, three, four, five. So, you need to stuff. So, that is what we are doing over here. After zero, if five one appears, we are stuffing one zero. Okay. Now, this helps us to break the pattern which is same as that of the flag. Very simple idea. Okay. Now, where all these type of a pattern appears, okay, where all these type of a pattern appears, which will going to be stuffed with a zero. Okay. So, there is one correction over here. You need, this is a stuffed bit, not this red one. Okay. Now, this idea of stuffing, one which is done at ascending side. Okay. So, the stuffing means we are talking of adding a certain redundancy. Okay. So, we are talking of adding a certain redundancy. So, this redundancy is required to be removed at a receiving side. So, that is done with the help of, okay. So, de-stuffing it, okay. This is what is an idea we use in these two type of framings, okay. So, basically in variable size frame, we come across two types of frames. One is character oriented, another is bit oriented. And when it comes to the character oriented type of framings, we use say character stuffing concept and when it comes to the bit oriented framings, so we use a, use a bit stuffing. So next we will talk regarding the two more services of data link layer that is flow control and error control. Okay. Now how exactly these two services will going to be implemented in the data link layer? Now to know regarding this, I will talk of uh, two entities, one is sender, another is a receiver. Okay. Now we will assume that sender pushes, the job of this sender is to send the frames to the receiver. Okay. Now receiver will going to acknowledge the frames when it comes to it in a fine and fit form. Okay. That means if the frame that comes over here, if it does not contain any errors. Okay. So after consuming that frame, after say accepting that frame, it will send a acknowledgement back to the sender. Okay. This idea of say sending an acknowledgement for the received frame helps us to provide or helps, uh, helps to implement these two services that is flow control and error control in the data link layer. Okay. Especially in DLC layer, this idea of acknowledgement helps to implement these two services. The same, the single acknowledgement will going to provide these two types of services. Okay. That is flow control and error control. Now, the idea of acknowledgement tells the sender that say the rate at which it will going to consume the packets. If the acknowledgement comes back to the sender at a faster rate, the, this is conveying the sender that I am consuming the data at a faster rate. I am consuming the frames or I am accepting the frames at a faster rate. Okay. If receiver starts sending the acknowledgement at a slower rate, it gives an indication to the sender that receiver's say accept, uh, acceptance capacity is slower. Okay. So this idea of acknowledgement gives the sender the idea regarding way in which the receiver is accepting the packets. Again, apart from that, if something goes wrong over here, okay, if the say while frame, say when it was pushed on the transmission line towards the receiver, there is a possibility that error may get added to the frames. If this is the case, receiver will verify the frame for errors in case the received frame has any errors, it will discard that frame 
or it will use this idea of acknowledgement to intimate it to the sender. The same acknowledgement technique will be useful in implementing these two tasks that is flow control and error control at a data link layer. Okay. Now we talk regarding the different types of uh, different ways that data link layer can provide a services to the higher layer. Okay, the first type of a service what it can provide to the higher layers is in a connectionless fashion or it can be a connection oriented fashion. So what exactly this connectionless uh, service and connection oriented service means? Basically it is nowhere connected with the physical connection between two nodes or two entities. Okay, basically it is talking regarding a connection between the frames. Okay, connection between the frames. So when we say a connectionless, every frame will going to be treated independently. Okay, but when it comes to a connection oriented uh, service, okay, frames, okay, so the relationship between a frames will be tried to be established. Okay, so every frame in case of connectionless, okay, will be treated as an independent frames. So they never try to say connect the current frame with its successor or a predecessor. Okay, whereas in case of connection oriented, so the current frame will definitely going to have a, some kind of a relationship with its successor as well as predecessor. Okay, this is what is the connection oriented and the connection less means. Okay, so right now we will not go into a details of this connection oriented and the connection less say services. Anyway, we will going to discuss regarding these things in a detail in a future videos. Next is we talk regarding data link layer protocols. In this video, we will going to say discuss only regarding this simple protocol and in the next video, we will talk regarding stop and wait protocol. Okay, so we will start with a simple protocol. Now, before going for this say simple protocol discussion, okay, first we will try to understand what is finite state machines, why we need this. The purpose of the finite state machines is the one which helps us to give a clear cut or the correct idea regarding the way in which some process functions. Okay, normally to know the services or uh, to know way in which certain process functions, say we use uh, FSMs to know in which all the state this process will go. Okay, and which all the events makes this process to move into those states. Okay, say in this example, it is a simple FSM. Okay, it is not specific to any process. Okay, just for say way in which uh, we are say representing the FSMs, we are discussing regarding that, which is nowhere connected to any of the process. Okay, it is a simple representation of say different states that process can undergo. Now say, I'll assume that the process which for which we are drawing this FSM has a two states, okay, state A and a state B, okay. So initially it will going to be in a state A, the event A, some event which makes it to change its state from A to B, okay. So the Triggering, action, uh, triggering thing will going to be done by event A, which in turn makes these two actions to execute. Okay, two actions will going to happen. That is action one and action two. So the event one will complete these two actions before the process moves from state A to a state B. Say process moves from state A to a state B. Okay, the same process it is moving from state A to a state B when an event 1 occurs and before moving to a state B, it completes these two actions. Okay, then I'll assume that the event 2 also makes the state 
of uh, the it makes the process to change its state but in this case the changing of state is not moving to a new state it is coming back to a same state okay without making any actions okay so without performing any actions it will come back to a same state okay and say event 3 i'll assume that event 3 makes this finite state machine to change its state from b to a okay this event 3 i assume that it will make action 2 to happen and then it will move to a state a so this is what we call it as finite state machines normally to understand okay to understand how exactly these protocols work we use we take help of this tool okay that is fsm now we we'll start our discussion regarding simple protocol basically before knowing the different protocols that are used in a dlc we will try to discuss regarding the simple protocol okay which is very much hypothetical protocol okay which say don't need a flow control and error control this idea of simple protocol basically it assumes the thing that okay the medium medium through which the communication is happening this medium okay which is error free which is error free okay so and one more assumption that receiver okay has a capacity to consume whatever that comes from the sender okay if there is no error the receiver will go and start accepting the frames at a faster rate so no question of say verification for errors okay no wasting of time in checking the errors so it is very sure that whatever comes to it is error free okay so it accepts it and forwards it to the higher layer fine so this channel is error free so that means it simplifies the task practically it is not possible to get this type of environment okay so that is the reason i said it is a very much hypothetical protocol okay now since we are talking regarding data link control layer okay so the whole representation of simple protocol is shown in connection with it that is the network layer on the sending side is the one who is the supplier of the data to the link layer okay and job of a link layer is to create the frame okay add address to it then send it whenever we say a frame it is address is also part of it okay now this frame is thrown on the outgoing link so this data is made to move towards the other end of the link and at the other side the other entity or the receiving entity which is sitting over here will accept this frame okay extract the data that is present in the frame normally frame includes header trailer and data part okay job of this layer is to extract only the data say remove that header and trailer from the frame and that data which is encapsulated in the frame will be handed over to the network layer okay so you look at here so it is supplying the data here this data link layer entities handing over the data to the network layer so this is what is an idea so again i will repeat what all the assumptions we have used in this simple protocol so which will be useful for us to say represent the uh, fsm now this channel is error free and receiver is capable to accept the data at the same rate at which it is sent by the sender okay now to know regarding the complete functionality of this protocol we will try to use the flow diagram of it okay so just now what i told over here it is represented in the flow diagram form okay you see the first packet that comes from the network layer okay normally that data supplied by the network layer it will be in the form of packet this packet will going to be say if it is within the limit of a frame it the same packet will going to be encapsulated in the frame or otherwise or otherwise this packet gets divided into a smaller units and it will be encapsulated into a multiple frames fine so depending on the size of the packet 
now again the assumption here what we made is simple the packet will going to be fit into the frames data part okay or in the frames payload part and this frame is forwarded to the next layer i mean next machine so receiver will going to accept this frame anyway no question of error detection extract the packet out of the frame hands over it to the network layer now see in this whole part the frame is shown over here the packet is shown over here the packet is the data that will going to be part of the frame fine so next this is what we call it as a frame now see here no question of error control no question of flow control okay so since the assumption is this is error free and this receiver is capable to accept the data at a better rate okay no question of say flow control error control now we'll see how exactly the fsm of the same protocol will going to be represented now you know that you see here the situation now whenever the packet arrives at it okay to receive this packet this process has to be in the ready state it has to be a ready state now look at this whole situation okay packet arriving and accepting okay now that means this is my process whose fsm i'll going to draw okay which whose fsm i'll going to show it in the next slide has to be in the ready state the possible state of this data link layer is a ready state yes is there any other state apart from that no no question of the other state because it is a simple protocol every time it is waiting for data to arrive from the higher layer fine whenever packet comes prepare the frame send it so that is the reason why it has to have only one state apart from that it is not doing anything other than that okay so this is the only possible state of the sender okay now the event that is making the say sender to say trigger or change the state is that is arrival of the packet from the higher layer okay higher layer is network layer whenever packet comes from that that is an event which makes it to perform these tasks that is make a frame and send see while doing this task again it is coming back after performing these tasks again it is coming back to a ready state that means only for a small period of time it is involved in transition from ready state to ready state okay so the event that is making it to do this task is packet that comes from the higher layer okay now when we talk about the receiver you see the receiver's job as soon as a frame arrives over here slightly different thing okay here it was the packet which was triggering it here the frame now the arrival of the frame will going to be an event over here arrival of the frame will going to be a event at a receiving side and whenever a frame arrives look at the task what it will perform frame arrival okay it is an event so it has to be in a ready state receiver has to be in a ready state to receive the frame okay so it extracts the data out of the frame okay that is packet and hands over to the network layer and coming back to a ready state to accept the next frame so this is how the fsm of simple protocol is represented now these fsms gives a complete idea regarding the simple protocols i hope it is clear to you so we'll try to discuss the stop and wait protocol which is more of the realistic protocol in the next video thank you very much